percentage of total revenue in a SaaS business is a terrible way to decide how much you should spend on marketing. Where did those things start? Where did it start of using a percentage of revenue to spend on marketing? Coca-Cola, direct-to-consumer e-com, reoccurring businesses, not recurring revenue model businesses, reoccurring purchase businesses like CPG brands and Fortune 500, where you need to spend marketing dollars to remind your customer to buy Coca-Cola every single time they walk into the store. Not in a SaaS business where once you acquire the customer on a contract, then you're going to invest money in account management and customer success and other things like that that a CPG brand would never invest in in order to remind that customer and to make them successful to rebuy again. I'm just going to spend a lot of time talking about how the financial dynamics are changing inside of B2B SaaS and tech companies and how that impacts sales and marketing expenditures and generally the entire financial profile of a, of a SaaS business that CFOs are trying to get to. But my guess is that most marketing execs, many sales leaders, most marketing individual contributors are not that privy to yet. I did an event with Dream Data this morning. We had more than 650 people live on a LinkedIn Live, and I got a lot of follow-up questions from that related to signals. So maybe we'll cover some of that, but obviously we're going to prioritize the topics and the questions from people that are here live first. So um, we'll do that. If we have some overflow, we definitely have enough questions queued up to give us the time here. So let's talk Let's talk. Uh, finances. And one of the questions and why I want to talk about this is uh, a question that I got asked in the Dream Data event was, what do marketers and salespeople need, specifically marketers, but I want to extend this to all go to market team, because I hate this, just what is market marketing versus sales or like marketers do this, I just want to look at it as a go to market team. What do what do these people need to do to elevate and be viewed as a key critical component of the company and a key critical person that's going to weigh in on the executive team. And my my answer was, you need to act like a C-level executive. You need to act like a business person first and a department leader or department contributor second. Most CMOs are a marketer. They don't, and the great CMOs are a business person first that happens to run the marketing department, but uses the business lens for every single thing they talk, they think through in their department. Same with a sales leader. Most sales leaders are salespeople first, not a business leader. You need to be a business leader first, and then be able to use your business advice, business understanding at the C level of thing to run your sales team. So let's talk about how the financial dynamics, specifically of a B two B SaaS company and a B2B tech company are changing and how that impacts how you invest in sales and marketing. Do you have SDRs and salespeople and marketers and solutions consultants and onboarding managers and account managers and CSMs, or do we need to have less specialized roles? How much should we invest to expand and renew customers versus how much should we invest to acquire net new customers? And back in 2019, when a private SaaS company was getting valued at 20 to 150x revenue, if you can remember the day, there were companies that did 2 million ARR the year before and lost money, effectively worth $0 on a discounted cash flow model that were raising money at a $200 million valuation, 100x revenue. No sense. And the investors that invested in those companies are all going to, are all sitting with massive unrealized losses that are on the balance sheet that are eventually going to have to get played out. Um, so what happens when before a SaaS company, let's just use, I'm just going to pick numbers instead of ranges, but obviously there are like large ranges, but a SaaS company that before, like a public SaaS company before was worth 25 X revenue for feed forward revenue. Think about like a Salesforce or an Adobe or something like that, that now is worth five X next 12 months, rev next 12 months revenue, which means that a company that used to be worth you know, 100 billion market cap is now worth 20 billion market cap. The value, the value of the company is 5x lower driven by the valuation multiples on revenue. And so before, when a, a software company could spend 50, that would normally spend 50% of, of, uh, of revenue on sales and marketing, that if the valuation goes to, and then that 50% of sales and marketing expenditures would then result 
in somewhere around a 30 month or a 36 month CAC payback period that when the valuation multiples compress, that it puts pressure on every single line item on the P&L, but specifically the amount of money spent on sales and marketing because it's the most expensive part and the most ex biggest investment in the entire company and frankly, gets the lowest return. And so the question that I keep getting in from a lot of people, like we got one yesterday, Chris, like for a 100 million ARR SaaS company, what percentage of revenue should we spend on marketing? And uh, I want to create this very this interesting distinction for people to consider here, which is that percentage of total revenue in a SaaS business is a fucking terrible way to decide how much you should spend on marketing. A terrible way. Where did those things start? Where did it start of using a percentage of revenue to spend on marketing? Coca-Cola, direct-to-consumer e-com, reoccurring 